Hey guys and gals, and got it here with a quick video on my Battlefield 4 video settings. Most of you know already through my stream that I uh, play on relatively low settings. And some of you want to know why I play on low settings when I just purchased the GTX 780. I grew up on games like Quake 2, Quake 3 Arena, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein Enemy Territory, and in between all that a bit of Counter Strike 1.6. So that immediately tells you that I'm used to games with not very, you know, not very good graphics. So high graphic settings don't really bother me. I had a GTX 580 in the beta. It was fine. It was more than capable of playing. Uh, I, you know, didn't have any problems. Stable 60 FPS or above. But uh, I wanted to stream Battlefield, so I forked out the extra money for a GTX 780, which is just more than good enough. It's, it's bloody brilliant. I also have a 120Hz bank monitor, so to get the most out of the refresh rate, I want to keep my FPS to as close to that refresh rate as possible, or above. And with the video settings that I use, makes it so. As you can see in the top right corner of the screen, you can see the, my current FPS rate. To do this, you'll need to bring down the console, and type in the console command to bring up the FPS. Unfortunately, the Battlefield 3 console commands didn't transfer over into Battlefield 4, so to bring up the FPS meter, hit the tilde key, on your keyboard, which is the key above tab. This will bring down the console where you will need to type in uh, the command, which is perf overlay dot draw FPS space one. I usually have around 190 to 200 FPS. However, I'm currently recording at 60 FPS, so this puts uh, more load on my system. So I've dropped around 20 to 30 frames to about 175 to 180 FPS. Which, don't get me wrong, is uh, still perfectly fine. Most of you will notice already that 190 to 200 FPS is a lot more than the refresh rate of my monitor. But what we haven't talked about yet is frame dumps. Battlefield 3 was notorious for frame dumps, and I actually think Battlefield 4 is somehow actually worse. As you can see in the top right corner, the numbers will suddenly plummet by 30 to 40 and sometimes even 50 frames. This is another reason why I play on such low settings. It's because I want to keep that number as high as possible so I can maximize the refresh rate of my, on my monitor. In Battlefield I play in full screen mode. For some reason it gets a bit temperamental if you don't, so I highly recommend you always play in full screen mode. V-Sync in most games is known to cause input lag. How to explain this is that it sometimes feels like your character or your player is running in a vat of syrup, so always turn it off. Field of view, I'm pretty sure the default value in Battlefield is 70. I have it on 90. As I said, I'm a huge Quake fanboy, and that's the field of view I used in Quake. So it's the field of view I'm most comfortable with. The higher you go with field of view, the game tends to look like you're looking out of a fishbowl. Personally, I wouldn't go higher than 100. Motion blur, pretty self-explanatory, completely pointless, no reason to have this turned on. Turn it off. Weapon DOF, basically scoping in and out weapon motion blur. Turn it off. Colorblind mode, totally a personal thing. If you like the other colours, go with them. Personally, I stick with the default colours. HUD size and resolution scale, again, a personal thing. Play with them, see what you prefer. I use a custom graphics quality. Textures, texture quality usually doesn't have a huge impact on FPS, so you can crank this one up. Usually going from low to ultra, you're not looking at a huge frame loss. However, if you notice that your system is constantly stuttering, or momentarily freezing, or you frequently see textures being streamed in while you're moving around, then lower the texture quality to, to see if this helps. You might not have enough VRAM, and you might be in need of an upgrade on your graphics card. I choose to leave this on high. Lighting quality, aka shadows. This setting is also greatly affected by the ambient occlusion setting, which we'll get onto later. Basically, the higher the setting, the more softer edge the, and uh, prettier the shadows are. To me, it's a vanity option, not a huge impact on FPS. I keep mine on low. You get the odd smart ass that will say, well, you can spot enemy players using their shadow from around the corner. Which is total bollocks, it never happens. It's a when the stars align moment. Once in a blue moon situation, it never happens. Ignore them. Effects quality. This setting determines the level of intensity of particle based effects, such as smoke, traces, and explosions, and fire. The performance impact on effects quality is not noticeable, but not major. For most people, medium is the best choice, but I'm looking for every frame I can get, so I have it on low. 
post-process quality affects things like bloom and motion blur. Since I already have these turned off, there's no point in having it any higher than low. Mesh quality. This one's a biggie. Reducing mesh quality will reduce the draw distance and detail, but the fundamental structure of every object will remain regardless of the setting. So if you don't mind the fact that it can make the game world seem a bit more plain, you can lower this setting to game more FPS. However, for me, this is a really important setting. It's not a setting that you can really leave low. You want to be spotting players on ridges and rooftops in the distance, so if you can leave this option on high, or even possibly ultra, go with it. Terrain quality. This setting determines the geometric complexity of terrain. Combined with low mesh quality and low terrain quality, you might see the odd player doing the old running in the air routine in the distance. Sometimes you might get popping of terrain, changing of shapes, etc. If this annoys you, turn it up a bit. But to me, this is another vanity setting and it's not really important, so I keep this low. Terrain decoration. Pretty self-explanatory, basically stuff on the ground. Crank it up, more stuff on the ground. I don't really care about what the ground looks like, so I keep this on low. However, it doesn't tend to be a huge impact on FPS, so you can crank this one up. I, however, still keep this on low. Anti-aliasing. What is anti-aliasing? Well, it's the method of reducing the jaggedness of lines. In a nutshell, the edges of buildings will look smoother. The major drawback with this method is that it's, uh, it's very performance intensive. If you don't have the best of rigs, turn this down. Or in my case, I turn it off. Same with anti alias in post. Turn it off. Ambient occlusion. What is ambient occlusion? It's a technique used to create more realistic shadowing from ambient lighting. This one puts a huge hit on FPS. So again, you want to turn this off, keep it low. As always, with any game, once you make some major video settings changes, it's always a wise idea to restart the game because some of these changes won't come into effect unless you restart the game. So these are the settings I use. You can give them a go, they might be good for you. As I said before, I low graphic settings don't really bother me. I'm not one for high graphic settings. As long as I get a clear, clean, high FPS picture, I'm happy with that. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped some of you. If it did, please show love through likes, comments, follows and favourites. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.